My name is uh, Ser Senor, at least I'm mostly known as Ser Senor, but uh, my real name is Gerrit and my surname is Afonso. But uh, in the daily life, many people call me Ser Senor and most of my friends call me Ser. Right now, I'm trying to promote myself in the music industry as Snidey. I live in uh, Suriname, I was born in Paramaribo. And uh, in 1999, I was raised in the interior for a year or two. But then uh, we, I had to move to Paramaribo because when I was four or five, I had to start going to school. My father used to work as a lumberjack, so for that, we were living on a small island in the middle of the Brocopondo Lake on the impoundment. But as soon as I moved to Paramaribo, I stayed here for several years until 2008. That's for the first time when I went uh, to my village for the first time in my life. And then I got uh, to learn a little bit about my own culture and my own religion. And then I came back to Paramaribo. It was for very short because it, I was just on school vacation, on summer vacation. So it was for six weeks. But then I had to come back. So I stayed here, went to school for a couple of years until I stopped going to school. Then I started working on Dampati River Lodge. That's a little bit how I came into tourism. Uh, my village is on the uh, upper stream of uh, the Suriname River. And here in Suriname, we know six different tribes of Maroons, and uh, one of those six tribes is known as the Saramakaner. And uh, we are named that because when the people first fled away from the plantation, uh, they manifested along the Saramaka River, that is one of uh, the six, also one of the six rivers here in Suriname. So we were just named after the river. But later on, then we decided to move further away because the officers, the soldiers were still coming, uh, trying to get the people back to the plantations. Yeah. Now, to make you understand that, then I will have to go back all the way to the beginning because when the European first came here to Suriname, the, fir the indigenous people, the native people of America was the Emerald Indian, the indigenous people. So they were the one which had to work on the plantations but they were not physically strong enough, so they used to die due to the hard work on the plantation. But also uh, lots of them died due to European diseases, which they were not immune against. So at a certain point, there was this priest, which was known as Priest Las Casas. He was the one which suggested that they abolished the Emerald Indian slavery because the death rate was so high that even when you read uh, the history books, when you come across something of uh, you know, uh, the slavery about uh, the indigenous people, it is in Dutch, they call it Rode Slavernij. Translated, it will be red slavery, and that is due to the very high death rate. So priest Las Casas, the Pope, then suggested that they started getting their slaves from Africa to work on the plantation instead of the Emerald Indians because they were not suited for that type of hard work. So uh, since the, uh, then they decided uh, they will abolish uh, the red slavery, the Emerald Indian slavery. So then they started getting the slaves from Africa. Now, then they would sail from Europe to the eastern coast of uh, Africa, and that is where they would trade in cheap goods for slaves, which they would later on sell for a very expensive price, a lot of amount of gold. From there, they leave on and then they uh, go to, uh, they, they come to the Americans and then they stop at a Caribbean air island. For example, one of those islands uh, will be uh, Curaçao. And uh, that is where they uh, sell the slaves. And the slaves which were not, you know, uh, attractive for people to buy, they were just Dutch, uh, dumped them and left them on the island. That's how the population on uh, Curaçao was also built. And uh, they've done that for uh, quite a while. They started in 1621. And then uh, they were doing the slave trade uh, until uh, 1807. That is when the British decided to abolish uh, the slave trade. But uh, the Netherlands itself, which was uh, importing uh, and exporting uh, slaves to Suriname, they kept on going until 1840. But since 1807, when the British uh, decided to abolish the, the slave trade, then uh, the Dutch, the Holland uh, people were also put under the pressure to uh, abolish the slave trade. Uh, but abolishing the, uh, the slave trade doesn't mean that the slaves were free yet. They, were still, they still had to work on the plantation. So there were uh, still slaves still working on the plantation and they were not free until 1863. But after 1863, they still, they still had to work 10 years under the plantation under state's supervision. So they were eventually free and had a choice of their own life after 1873. So uh, after 1873, the people were eventually free. But 
they were not just working on the plantation under pressure because they didn't have a good life there. So many people were trying to flee away from the plantation and then uh, flee into the jungle and then try to lead a new life. So uh, that is how uh, we had the, the different uh, tribe of Maroons which existed today. And the tribe you belong to depends on what plantation and where or what area and under which leadership you guys went away and then uh, they will form a rebel. So under which leadership you are, that will uh, decide what tribe uh, you belong to. So we know six different tribe of Maroons and each of them have uh, their own leaders and uh, they live in separate area. For example, I am from uh, the Saramakan tribe. So we live along uh, the upper uh, stream of the Suriname River. That is where we are from. Yes, for example, me, myself, I am from uh, the village called Dang. The word for rapid in my language is called Dang. But, uh, and right across my village, we also have a rapid. So we decided to call the village Dang. So my village is actually named after the rapid, which is right across the village. Yes, my tribe is uh, divided in 12 different clans. Uh, we call it law. And uh, the word for law in English, uh, it's similar to clan. It's not like really a clan, but it's similar to a clan. And it's not like there are clan wars or something, but they were just the different groups of people which fled away on a different uh, time, but yet they still managed to go and under the same leader. But those already had their smaller leaders, so that's why it had to be divided in uh, different clans. Now, that's a little bit about uh, my background itself, but let's go back to the history about uh, 1873 when uh, the slaves uh, were free. Now, 10 years before the abolition of the slavery, they started looking for people to work on the plantation. So in 1853, then uh, they decided uh, to get the Chinese out of China, which uh, came to Suriname here in 1853. That is 10 years before the abolition. So then uh, in, those, uh, in the 10 years, it wasn't a success for them coming here because the owners of the plantation, the masters, were refusing to pay people to work for them while they still had the slaves to work uh, for free on the plantation. So them coming here wasn't a success. They, but the plan was to get them to come here to Suriname as a contract laborer to work on the plantation. So it was a success. And most people ask, but we don't see those Chinese which or which their ancestors are from China from the 1853 days because it was a group of a group of 2,500 men, no female only men was uh, in the group. So that is why the only thing which we have of those contract laborers left that is uh, the name, the family name, the surname. Uh, Sometimes you might go uh, to a doctor or to an office for an appointment and waiting for your turn, then you might hear a name like Chin Lip Singh. So. In me and myself, I will be expecting a Chinese guy to stand up, but in most cases you will just see a black people, a Creole, which will stand up and uh, walk up to the front desk. And those are uh, the descendants of those uh, Chinese from 1853. So them coming here wasn't a success, but the slaves were still working at the plantation. So in 1873, when uh, the slavery was abolished, then they needed uh, new workforces. Now, since that Holland was put under the pressure to uh, abolish the slavery uh, by uh, the British, then the British suggested that they can get their uh, contract laborers from uh, British India, because back then India wasn't, uh, wasn't independent yet. Uh, they were still waiting for the uh, independency. So uh, they've done that for a couple of years, because uh, they got uh, the authorization to do that. And after a certain period, uh, India itself became uh, uh, independent. So then we now had speaking of the Republic India. And India decided we won't give anyone away to work as contract labor. So in uh, 1890, then they started getting uh, their contract laborers from Indonesia, Java, because that was a colony of the Holland, the Dutch uh, state itself. Now, here in Suriname, we speak uh, different uh, type of languages. Uh, if you grow up here, uh, you're entitled to speak uh, several languages. Uh, first is your own language, native language. For example, if you're from one of the Maroon tribe, then you will speak one of them. Me, myself, my native language is Samakatongo. Actually, we call it Samakatongo, but in English and in Dutch, they call it Saramakansatal, for example, in Dutch. But we, our language doesn't have the letter R, so we don't use uh, the letter R 
in uh, while seeing it. So actually, most of the time when someone will address me as a Sanamakaner, I will correct uh, the person. Uh, the slaves which came here to Suriname are from, were from different countries from Africa. And so different countries also means different languages. So we couldn't keep our own language. So we had to switch over and then communicate with each other. And on the plantation, new languages were formed. And your language, uh, the language of which tribe, for example, as a Maroon, uh, depends on which plantation uh, you used to work. For example, my language, we have lots of uh, Portuguese and Spanish influences. That is because my ancestors used to work on the Portuguese Jewish plantation. In my language, we have words like uh, tio, and tio means uncle, and tia, tia means like uh, your aunt. And then uh, if you keep going on, we have also words like Otobanda. In Portuguese, you say Otobanda, which means the other side in my language. We still don't speak the letter R, so we say Otobanda. In Spanish, you say Mujer, which is for women. Uh, in my language, you don't speak the R, so we say Muye. And if you keep on going, you'll find words like Camisa, uh, Sapatu, and those are all words which has been uh, uh, influenced uh, by uh, the Portuguese and uh, Jewish and the Spanish. Also, we have Serana Tongo, and uh, Serana Tongo, which has a more English influence uh, inside, and that is because the first uh, persons uh, which managed to colonize Suriname was uh, the British. The British people, they were the ones which managed to colonize Suriname as the first people. So that is where we got our English influ influences from in the Serana Tongo uh, language. Uh, for example, while counting, then you can hear it very uh, clear. In English, you would count one, two, three, four, five. In Serana Tongo, we just count one, two, three, four, five. So you can hear that it is very similar and we still have lots of other words which are also very similar. And uh, the language here, uh, the standard language which we ha uh, have in school, that is Dutch. So uh, everyone will have to, if you go to school, then you will be able to speak Dutch. You can just pick that simply up from the street. And uh, apart from that, uh, then we also have uh, the English, English, uh, our media, let's say, apart from the local news itself and the newspaper, those are in Dutch, but our, mo our movies are from America. So even if you don't speak English when you live here in Suriname, you will at least understand a few words because, or else you won't be able to, to follow the media or watch movies on the television. So when you grow up here, you have to be, a, you will be able to speak your native language, Dutch, uh, Tongo and English. Spanish, we also get uh, Spanish at school, uh, but only for two years and it's exclusive, then you can decide whether you take it with you or not. And the native language here, languages here in Suriname, because we have different races here, so you will have Hindustani, so Hindi, but it's a lot uh, different than Hindi, which they speak in uh, India. This one we call it Sarnami, because uh, it has uh, influences from the Hindi language, but it no, it's not pure Hindi itself. So the Japanese, they speak uh, Japanese from Indonesia, the Maroon tribe. Uh, we have six different tribes with their six own different languages and Dutch and English. My profession is a tour guide. I work as a full time uh, tour guide. I didn't get into tourism, you know, like I was aware of it, of what it was, because I was still going to school. I was still studying, but my background is like uh, I'm an actually I, I was supposed to be an electro technician so I used to go to school but at a certain point my father used to work as a lumberjack but then he was you know like too old to do the hard work so then he decided to retire but then we didn't have enough money so I would be like for two weeks sitting home I don't have money to go to school and my parents went back to the interior so I was living alone in Paramaribo so that's the that it bring me to the point where I gave up, you know, cause I said, you know what, <laughs> just let it be. So I stopped going to school. But before that, I also did uh, some jobs where I've worked on Dampati River Lodge. That's a, a resort, a tourist resort right across my village. So uh, when uh, the manager heard that I wasn't going to school anymore, so he just called me up like, hey, what's up? What are you doing? He said, I said, no, I'm just home trying to find a job. So. Then uh, he uh, called me up, I went to Dampati, so I said, okay, you're going to be a guide. So I'm like, oh, what is that? <laughs> so he let me orientate for two weeks. So I just learned it practically. I didn't go to school for it or had any studies or lesson. 
So then I just, yeah, I went into tourism. I loved it, so I decided to stay in it. And during that period, I was just representing my own area. But then I thought, you know what, instead of my own area, my, only, my, only my tribe and only my area, I want to represent my country and not only the small part of the interior. So that is uh, when I decided to move away. And then uh, I went to another resort, which is called Anaola, which, was, which, is, which is also along the upper Suriname River, but much closer to the city. Uh, but I wasn't satisfied there. I didn't. I wasn't feel, really feeling home, so I decided to come to Paramaribo. I heard there was a tour operator called Orange Travel. They were looking for a new guide because one of their guides was about uh, to retire. So I let one of my friends hook me up with them. That's how I came uh, to Orange. So right now, instead of only one location, I'm doing multiple uh, locations. So like I will be here on the coast, uh, on the coast of the country, but also sometimes go very deep into the interior. Here in Suriname, we have different type of uh, music. Uh, in the music industry, we have uh, lots of influences from uh, other country. Uh, some of the most popular dancing and uh, not dancing, uh, but singing style, music styles, which we have here. One of them would be uh, hip hop, normal hip hop, but also the trap hip hop has been rising uh, the couple of years so it's also getting very popular here in Sudan. Most of the new uh, musicians, new rappers are trying to step into the trap uh, trap hip-hop instead of doing normal hip-hop. We will also have reggae. Reggae is also very popular here. Then we also have, I don't know what style they call it, but uh, the Hindustanish people have also their own influences of music. Uh, the Japanese people, they call theirs Jawa. Jawa is also one of uh, the style, music style which we have here. And uh, also the native people, uh, the Maroons have uh, their own uh, style uh, of music also. For example, one my, for my tribe, we have uh, this style which is called the Seketi. And the Seketi is something which existed on the plantation. It's, it originated from the plantation because on the plantation, they were not allowed to speak openly or have a normal conversation with uh, each other. So then to flee away, to make a date and uh, to send out messages, they were singing. So while they were walking, working on the plantation, then they were just singing. So the owner said, ah, he is just enjoying himself. But actually they were just sending messages throughout each other. So when one person catches the message, he will start singing. So the other one will also start singing. And that's how they would spread it to, uh, through out the whole plantation uh, of what they were going to do later on in the day or later on in the night. And uh, when they flit away, but when you flee away, you just, you know, want to celebrate that, hey, it's been a success of uh, that I've tried to go away from the plantation, but then they didn't have any music instrument with them. So then they would clap inside their hand and that would give the rhythm. So then they would start singing. And uh, the songs are very dynamic. It can be about love, hope, uh, feeling, your desires, your daily life and experience of the life, or even met something metaphorically. So it doesn't have to be specifically about something you can see or, you know. Me, myself, I am an upcoming artist, a struggling uh, rapper. Ata opa mita hangi, nuisifa me sabi, bigasen be happy ki mita yu henasi mi ekte libita hebi mawam lasi bibi. Otambe i moi te fui sa koku fisi masa gado awi fisi awi baka de gandi we mita be gibe unchami i gade zonu de ke fami liti kuma de bao mi. Normally I uh, do hip hop even if it's on a trap beat I would just rap like normal hip hop because everyone are trying to you know to sound the same and I always like to keep my style you know quite different and unique because I don't want to sound like everyone I want but when someone listens to my music and be like yeah damn this is something special or this is something different so i'm all i'm trying to stand out of you know stand out of the crowd shine the light on me say about a week ago i came out with my uh, first uh, and official single before that i already used to rap but uh, i didn't have uh, that many tracks i was more freestyle rapper and uh, I would be more involved in a uh, rap battle because that was very popular back then at my school and my own school. Um, uh, that's the normal type of rapping that I do but apart from that then I rap to any type of beat that has a rhythm that I can put a rap into. 
Uh, for example, my uh, latest uh, single isn't on a hip hop beat, but uh, instead on a zook rhythm beat. So it, it has more of this zook rhythm. Yeah, and right now I'm also working on an album, but it will take a couple of more months before uh, I, came, I come out with it because it costs lots of money and uh, I have to save money and then record each song uh, another day. So after a month or two, then I think I will be out with my first album ever. But uh, this time I won't do hip hop, <laughs> uh, hip hop on it. I will do uh, the second thing. that is what I will do because I want to show the love of my uh, culture, the love of the music style which is uh, present in my uh, own uh, group. So that's why I'm going to try and do a second CD in instead of a hip hop uh, CD. But later on in the year maybe then I might come with a, up with a hip hop album. But for now I'm working on a second uh, album. The lobby that had one sonny for keys and bell. Are you de me? The lobby that had one sonny for keys and benomi mama. Bend the bark at your go go mama on me. Bend the me ye with the tiffy mama on me bar. Moy bend the hey ye me, moy bend the me co me bar gado, moy bend the bar. Moy bend the no 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 no, moy bend the me co me bar gado, moy bend the bar. Moye mucha chaputu, ye silinga musa, be half it. Moye le me tanda bucano, witty so eke. Moi bende he ye mi, moi bende mi ko mi ba gado, moi bende ba. Moi bende no 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 no, moi bende mi ko mi ba gado, moi bende ba. Muye mucha che putu, e silinga musa, be hafiti. Moye le mi tanda abukano, weti so e ke. Made yon kuti de soja wan wili ta wele. Ta fiti li dami te ma inge de yon kuti de soja wan bisi ude ta bisi ya ta fiti li dami poi. Mi si wang bala lak baja sine isi gama fa ode haki jion kwa masta. Di lobi de tadu wan soni fa ki isi mbe no mi mama. Bende ba, keche go go mama o miu, bende mi ye, viti tifi mama o mi ba. Di lobi le tadwa soni fa ki, sembe po wadi li yoga ma o, di lobi le tadwa soni fa ki, sembe no mi mama. Bende ba, keche go go mama o miu, bende mi ye, viti tifi mama o mi ba.